Welcome back. We're still doing the rounds, everyone. And here we are in Erin Village. So let's start in the Atlia. See if anyone's there. Shooting Rose would be, surely. Maybe having a meeting? Uh huh. You're upstairs, are you? So not having a meeting. What are you doing? Having some tea. How lovely. I'm exhausted. Let someone bring me something meaty and some juice and sweets while they're at it. She's really taking it easy, huh? A short rest can't hurt. I do have some jobs to take care of. It's going to pop out in a bit. Besides, some carefully focused slovenliness over a short period of time will help me restore my manner. <laughs> That's uh, certainly rather skill of you to manage in a way. Apparently, some strange person wandered into the village, Beryl. It's probably fine to leave them be. They look like they're with Thor's. Besides, I need some carefully focused slovenliness. Help me restore my manner. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. like no one up here. Hup. Hup. Did you hear him say hop? Yes. Still don't know. It's not every day we get a customer from outside the village, let alone such an unusual one. And it really takes a lot of luck to get lost in the woods and wander in here, but a guest's a guest. Said she's an old friend of yours from Thor's. We'll be sure to show her our best hospitality. Don't worry, your friend will be fine. We'll show her some good old-fashioned Erin hospitality. Yeah, but... How is Beryl already back here? She must be using the spirit path, right? Thank you for that delectable experience. That program has had a ripple effect, the resonance of which has redrawn your fate. <laughs> what a fascinating turn of events. Th thanks? I think? What? Thank you for that delect- What? I've been looking forward to this radio program for many, many reasons. What? The teleportation stone may still be a little screwy. We should probably look it over one more time. Looks like you were put through quite the rigmarole with your trial at the Spectral Moon Mirror. But now we have a read on the situation. The Gnome's betrayal, the Divine Knight's battles, and the fates of Rose's dear old friends. It's all thanks to you. Take a break and rest today. You've earned it. Yeah, I will. Dum bum 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 dum bum. Ah, <sighs> this is nice. Classic tea! I should talk to you again. Rose looks positively exhausted. Well, there's nothing that's serving her up. One of her favorite dishes with a hearty helping of meat can't fix. While I'm there, I'll go ahead and give her a report about this girl here having shown up too. Take a break and rest today. You've earned it. Yeah, I just want to hear like what other people say about Beryl being here. Especially the kids. They'd probably be a slightly more insightful because they'd be a bit more honest. I'd hope, anyway. I'd hope. Alberio's finally old enough to offer up some proper assistance now. It's been an absolute lifesaver. Especially when all the adults are getting busier and busier. Even we're feeling a little anxious, too. Guess that means we only have a little time left before we hit the apex of the Great Twilight. You know what? Everything's gotta be fine. Yeah, I know you can do it. And, um, we'll have me cheering you on, too. Let's go out there and beat this thing. You guys have the Ashen Knight at your side, don't you? So then if anyone can tackle this, it's you guys. And I'm um, have me cheering you on too, so go out there and beat this thing. Indeed. This'll be a good fishing spot. It's not Loki's fault the hot spring got all messed up. But I I said something really mean to him. An awful. Wonder if he'll forgive me. Oh no. With the hot spring was my fault. Loki, can you forgive me? Oh dear. Poor Loki. I knew those gnomes were good for nothings. The moment they betrayed our clan and tried to lay their hands on the Great One. Now it seems that the Dark Dragon's creation was just as much a disaster for them as it was for the rest of the world. Alright, if what the Spectral Moomera showed us about the real Mastermind is true. Gnomes have been through a lot. 
We may have lost our elder, but they lost the holy beasts, and of course, their pride. The curse shackling them ensured that loss. Well, there's no reconciling with them now. All that we can do for them is to oppose their plans to the very end. Yeah, not only to pay them tribute to them, but also to prevent this world of ours from being destroyed. <laughs> ah, the confidence of youth. You're welcome here any time. I'll tell you all I know about the other rivalry participants. Hmm? So you're going up against the Palatinate Knight next, huh? It's both speedy and tough. She'll not let your guard down. Many of it, the Itzia past awakeners have been a little quirky. When they matched up well with Zector, they could prove to be formidable opponents. Don't get caught up by his tricks. Stand your ground and fight it out to the end. Thank you for the advice. Hmm, interesting. Knock the watch. It's a knock the watch. What's that again? I'm curious about like reflections and stuff. It's like, hmm. Is it like reflecting something like we wouldn't normally see? That sort of thing. Because that could be interesting. Like something hidden in the mirrors. Ah, it's been a while since we were able to kick back and relax together. How's No been doing these days? She's starting to act m a little more mature. She and that family of hers really seem to understand one another, so maybe that's part of it. Hey, that's great. I knew the kid had it in her. It's up to us to stop this great twilight, you know? Give her a brighter future. You're right. We'll keep doing whatever we can. You and me together. Noah's grown a lot in the short time I've been away. Does my heart good to see her? Maybe I'll go catch up with her. Or actually, I heard someone from the outside wandered into the village a while back. It's a pretty rare occurrence, so maybe I'll go check that one out instead. Noah's matured a little, I think. Taking in that familiar must have taught her some responsibility. I couldn't be happier. Can't just sit back and allow the world to end? We owe it to our children to give them a world worth living in. Try. Take that as done. Still want someone to just comment on Beryl being here. Master, are you sure you're okay? You scared me half to death when you collapsed like that. You always like to overreact. So I was avoiding telling you this. But I have a condition where I feel unwell if I overexert myself when using my power of divination. You're a good student, Sigan. Learn to properly harness the power of you and keep growing. When I was young, I dabbled in some spells I shouldn't have and brought this affliction upon myself. I see. So that's why you're having me focus so much on the basics. Well, don't just stand there. Training to do. It'll be all right after I rest a while. Hmm. I was so scared when Master suddenly collapsed. I'm just glad it wasn't serious. Still, the spirit veins aren't looking good. I have to make sure I support Master here so she doesn't overexert herself. Well, now this is awkward. I didn't want to see you to see me like this. Uh, I'm doing what I can to resist the Twilight, but it looks like I overdid it. Don't worry, I'll be fine once I get some rest. Apparently, someone wandered in through the barrier recently. There we go. I right hear she's a little mysterious, but not a bad person. Perhaps I'll go say hello and welcome her to the neighborhood. Hmm. We have to resist the great twilight. No time to be lying around. Do rest a little first, but I suspect I'd better get back to work afterward. I want to hear more about like your barrel being here. More information. More. Just need more. Let's check out here. See if there's anything going on. This way leads to the clearing outside. Couldn't think of any reason we'd need to go there. If someone stood there, Reen, so we could discuss things with them, that's a reason to go there, isn't it, Reen? Loki? No, oh dear. Huh? What's this? You're probably worried about your owner, huh? Indeed. I think we get another scene, do we? Elisa, Fee, Emma, Laura, and Sarah. Okay. So let's. <laughs> so it was Elisa, Laura, it was Emma, and 
Sarah, yeah, wasn't it? That was it. If I'm wrong, we're gonna have to come back. Right, so... Add in... Ferris wheel. Is that right? I didn't read it. Reen and the others enjoyed the hot springs and took their time resting in the village. Soon after, a familiar group found themselves together in the open air bath. Um, looks like I'm the odd man out here. I'll just be, uh... <laughs> no need to be shy, Reen. These aren't any worse than swimsuits. Nothing scandalous here. Besides, you even have Toa here with us this time. She's drowning the other Toa, though. You sure do. This has got me thinking back to when we went to the hot springs in Ymir. Time really flies. I'm still not sure why I need to be here, let alone in human form. Well, either way, I'm glad you agreed to make an exception and tag along, Celine. Can you believe your luck, Reen? You basically have your pick here if you catch my drift. Yeah, pretty sure everyone does. I don't say I deserve any of this. Why not? I'm the one to blame for the crisis that the world is in now. Grey twilight. And yet here I am relaxing with my close friends. Got so many people I can lean on and trust. But you don't deserve to be so lucky. Don't be so harsh on yourself. I think you do deserve it. I mean, it's really alright. Times like these are really precious. So we got to make the most of them. Agreed. If you wish, I'll even scrub your back for you. Take some of the edge off. And then I'll take care of his hair. Uh, guys. I could help tend to your ears, too, if you'd like. I'll be on shoulder massage duty. It's all a little much, don't you think? <laughs> you made these girls feel sorry for you, so this is what you get now, Reen. I'll grab her some drinks and maybe snag a bite or two. Oh, dear. And so, after an extraordinarily decadent soak, we stumbled out of the hot spring recharged in a variety of ways. And we'll never speak of it again. So I saw you in the hot spring. You won't believe this. Someone from the outside world stumbled into the village today. It happened right after I started helping around the house. It must have been a gift straight from Adios. But, well, uh... She's weird. I asked every question about the outside I had bottled up in my brain, but all the answers I got in return were so boring. Guess not everyone out there is super interesting. It's a little disappointing, to be honest. It, it, Beryl? It's really surprising to see someone stumbling from the outside world today. But it wasn't as exciting as I'd hoped. Guess not everyone out there is as interesting as you guys. Even so, I still want to see the outside world for myself. I just stay here and daydream about it my whole life. You, you found Barrel Boy? What? How? Hello and welcome to Lumeric. Or Lumeric. Is there a reason you're buried in books? Oh, don't mind me. Ever since the mastermind behind all of this was revealed, I've been going over the history books. Never would have thought that the Ebon Knight was lucky behind all these incidents. However, if I reproach these documents with that fact in mind, I can easily understand what the gnomes are thinking. I feel all my doubts and questions melting away. Well, that's, uh, great. Would you happen to know if any new information has turned up yet? As a matter of fact, yes. Regards the completion of the Great Twilight. The Black Workshop is entirely unfit for this purpose, since it is cut off from the spirit veins. So they must have taken some special measures to fix that. In contrast, we're trying to come up with a plan to strike that point. I see. If the spirit veins are connected, we might be able to come up with something. Indeed. This is all thanks to you all activating the Spectral Moon Miller. I'm truly thankful. Ashen Awakener, Children of Thors, take care of yourselves on the rest of your journey. We will. Thank you. I've been looking over the old histories to try to deduce the gnome's next move. It's been a bit of a rough working through the day and nights. But there's this thing called Soda that go left there? Yeah. I'd say it's really put a spring in my step. That I do know where she's at. Maybe I should order some next time. Sounds like Jingo's been carrying out some good trades here. The influence of the outside world is gradually creeping in. Not that it matters to me any uh, uh, either way. I'm looking over the old histories, trying to introduce next moves. 
soda. Okay. Right. Off to Palm we go then. Hello. It's my second visit here, four months since the first. Oh, it's you again. I never thought it would be like this. My boyfriend was drafted. Before I knew what was I was doing, I was on my way to this town where we had been on a trip together. It's nice to like have recognizable like characters, even though they're just called tourists. It's like, yep, I know who, who they are. Chasing after memories isn't productive in any way, though. Aww. Many stores in Palm had to close as men got drafted into the army. Everyone is really struggling right now. Sometimes I wonder if it's really okay for me to continue like nothing's happening. Hmm. Same again, alright. What's pointing out to me is like, nope, you never go through that door at the back. So it's like it's a mystery why it's got the yellow bar. Because it does imply there's still some way you could go there. Is there any way, like, could we maybe, like, like, it'd be funny if, like, no one ever thought to, like, try and go behind the counter. It's like, oh, yeah, that opens up and you can go through and there's a secret area. It's like, what? You may find it hard to believe, but I've been called on to join the army as an engineer. I must be desperate to draft an old man like me. My shop will stay open, so don't worry about that. Mr. Gallard promised to look after it. Mr. Gallard will be looking after my shop while I'm gone. Might be inconvenient for my customers, but when the army calls, it's not like you can say no. But you can, but, you know, causes issues. Causes issues. A lot of them. Reggie joined the army and left the other day. It was a promising one. Won the special award in this year's Spring Die Festival. Wish I could have done something to keep him. But we're powerless here. The army calls, you've got to go. Bertrand and Dwight got drafted. The town's emptying day by day. Nothing we can do about it, though. Bertrand asked me to look after the place until he returns from the war. Securing supplies is no easy task, but I've got good neighbors who are letting me buy some from them. Katan started helping out recently, but he's not here at the moment. He said he was going to the Church of Clover. Parting with our friends and families is hard on all of us. Not so, I'm not so presumptuous that I think I can stand in for Katan's father, but I'm going to do what I can to look after him. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Doesn't seem to be any more dots in here. Okay. I had a feeling this was coming, but my draft card finally arrived. I'm trying to cram in as much weaving as I can before it's time to leave. I've practically glued myself to this loom. Well, Lou's going to have to manage all this on her own soon, so I want to lighten the workload as much as I can in the meantime. Louisa really worries too much. Maybe I'm too optimistic. <laughs> Uh, I'm not as naive as to have thought my husband would somehow avoid getting drafted. When it actually happened, I was anything but ready. But like me, he just quietly accepted it. I don't know if I preferred if he swore and raged against his fate instead. My husband will be leaving shortly, so I'm cooking him his favorite meal. I just want to give him one more reason to make sure he comes back safely. Yes. Nothing interesting to buy there. Okay. 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 Let's go this way. Your lot's taken over the tavern while the owner's away, did you hear? Got no doubts that he can manage it, but I'd be darn shame if he let his dying skills get rusty. I like having him as my arch rival. Hmm, you changed your tune a bit. Nothing's changed for me. I dive threads of fabric, stay in and out. Get out of my house. You see fewer and fewer men in Palm. And yet the conscriptions continue. This rate, there'll be just women, children, and the elderly here. Mr. Gallard is stretching himself thin, helping everyone. Wish I could do something for him. You see fewer and fewer men in Palm. Do something for him. Get out. Leave. Like, what? Get through the door, Reen. Terrible. 
Nope. No one in here. That feels weird. Makes sense, but feels weird. Hello, hello. The townspeople are getting impatient. We want to know when our campaign is going to start. It's not like we're standing around twiddling our thumbs. Now we've been told to stay here and await further orders, though. It's so tiresome being stationed here. Let's win this war already so I can go back to Heimdall. What if Cavill to actually pull themselves together and attack us here? Nah, even if they did, we'd crush them easily. Would you, though? I've got a good feeling about this spot. Shut up. I'm not doing any fishing. Blech. Fishing. Father Hobbins has been keeping our morale up. If this is inspirational sermons, Adios will provide guidance for us. If we would only seek her, my faith is strong again. Dear Adios, please look after the children of Pa. May Catton's father return home soon. May Catton be able to find happiness. Aww, that's sweet. Father Hobbins has taught me lots of stuff about Adios and old legends. I'll do my best too, even though Dad can't be here for a while. I'll probably cry sometimes, but I'll do my best for Dad's sake. That's Garbut Clover and Mr. Galley are still here. I'll do my best too. I sat with the children listening to Father Hobbins' stories all day. Story Day is a public reading of tales based on Adios' teachings arranged for young children. We <laughs> both look so at ease listening to them. Father Hobbins was wise to think of this. Oh, Hobbins, let me pick a few stories to read to the children. See them regain their energy like this makes me feel like it was really worth taking the time to carefully consider which ones. Indeed. Well, well if you've come to join in on Story Day, it must be utterly incomprehensible for children to lose their parents to war. I should try reaching out to them with Adios's compassion at the very least. It must be utterly incomprehensible, very least. Alright, so we're done in Palm. So let's see about just getting a little bit of, like, this out of the way. What's the smallest area? Let's just do the Noble District. It's... Ooh. We won't do the match. We'll just do the Noble District in this part. Like get that little bit out of the way. And we should be all right in the next part. Be all lined up and then ready to advance after that. I get it. You're worried about your dad going off to the army. And you're mad because it seems like your mum doesn't care, right? Yes, that's why we're fighting. I think that your mum is really very upset. <laughs> Why would you say that? In the Civil War, my mum and dad protected us, but they were taken to be by Adios' side. I cried to my big sister every day. But she wouldn't cry, and she'd try to cheer me up instead. Triple dot. One night, when I woke up in the middle of the night, I saw her crying. That's why I think your mum really does want to cry, but she's staying strong for you. Then I was being mean. Aww. Mum was putting on a smile to try and make me feel better. Then I really said some horrible, something horrible to her. Yeah. Mum, I'm sorry. Go tell her. Go tell her, mate. And I can actually make things worse. No, 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 no. Was I any help to Timothy? Yes, you corrected his path. It's fine. Alright, so let's check these houses. Oh, sorry, Martians. Oh. I took him for a nag, but he turned out to be a sensible man. Hey, well, I accept your offer. Uh oh. Charles signed the agreement. Charles? <laughs> you gullible idiot. Didn't you notice the carbon paper underneath, did you? You signed two deals at once, you fool. Guess what? The one you haven't seen entails? What are you talking about? You just donated all of your land to me. I'm going to put your tenants to work. Have a summer cottage built here and whatnot. It was not my game. My plan is to live comfortably right here. That's exactly what I'll do, thanks to you. <laughs> so what happened to avoid this? Because something's going to make it so it's avoided. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but the contract you speak of is all soggy and illegible. What? But we didn't spill anything on the table. How did this happen? I suppose the tablecloth was still wet from when I washed it yesterday. The paper on the bottom got damp and the ink blotted all over. Ah, uh, I... Charles got lucky this time. I don't think his signature on carbon paper is legally sound, but still, that was a really nasty scam. When Lord Dendere revealed the carbon paper trick, 
I could feel all the blood drain from my face at once. Fortunately, I was saved by Izzy's clumsiness. All's well that ends well. If it's all the same, I'd prefer not to have a conversation with my doctor about my blood pressure in the near future. Mm-hmm. I didn't have time to dry the tablecloth properly, but it's only a damp in a few places, so I thought they wouldn't notice. Kind of embarrassing that they found out. You saved them, it's fine. I'm going to keep these documents. Continue this conversation in court, Lord Dendere. No, hold on, uh, the first offer I made... You can at least set that one, no? Uh, it's not a bad deal for you. Can we settle this outside of court? I beg you. Mm-hmm. You screwed, mate. You are screwed. His face just like... Um... Crap. Essentially. There you are. Ever since the master was conscripted, Timothy has been so worried. Both the mistress and I have tried our best to cheer him up. But it's just had the opposite effect. Which is now our last hope. I wonder if it'll work. By the way, it seems that the mistress' health hasn't been so good because of her all, all of her emotional turmoil. The mistress is resting in her room. I'm looking after the young master and Richie for her. And I hope that Richie will be able to give the young master proper advice. Indeed. Now that his lordship has returned, Master has a bit more room to breathe. Such a relief. Supporting artists is a noble pursuit. He is working himself to death. Even now, he must be under so much pressure. What with the government requesting substantial funding. That's where I come in. It's my job to ease his mind by serving him the most delicious tea I can muster. Yeah. Incidentally, the mistress and myself are keeping a lid on the budding romance between Miss Mary and a certain someone. Master doesn't know yet. Given how he dotes on his daughter, I've been cautious about broaching the subject. Indeed. It's been a while since we got a break together. Things have been hectic indeed of late. Heard that you got a message from Mary the other day. I did. Sounds like they've implemented a full-scale military training curriculum over at Thor's. She's in charge of training for the new type of Panzer Soldats. My poor girl must be stressed beyond belief. My darling daughter is instructing in the use of deadly weapons. Oh, this is exactly why I was against her becoming an instructor at a military academy. Does it, my sweet, kind-hearted girl, will participate in this foolish war no longer? I'll get in touch with the principal and... Please calm down, dear. The other instructors have been helping Mary however they can. Sounds like she's in the clear now. Mm, well, as long as she's safe. But by speaking of instructors, I trust she's not been propositioned by any ne'er-do-wells among the faculty? You really do dote on that girl. My husband will never stop doting on our daughter, no matter how old she gets. I wonder when I should tell him that Mary has fallen for someone. Maybe now. Or the war. Now you mention it, I wonder what Alistair is doing. First time he's gone into a creative slump since the incident, isn't it? Oh, I mean, back when Alistair was in love with a young lady from a different class. When she tragically perished in an unforeseen accident, he lost his spark for a while. His talent is one of the history books. It'd be a shame if he let his artistic sensibilities languish. Mm hmm, hmm. Intriguing. No dots upstairs. Let's just check if there's a dot. Maybe with a star in it or something like that up there. Well, there's not. It's not he's got the star, it's just there is a star up there, so. Marky Harms is here today. There are some other visitors today, too. If you have business with Marky Ballard or Marky Harms, then you may proceed. And we will, in the next part. Hopefully we will be able to finish off the rounds, because it's only this left, isn't it? And a trial chest. That's all we've really got left. Left? Left. So we'll see you in the next part. Ta-da for now.